Talk. I'm Margaret and this is Alan and today as our guest we have Dr. Michael Manuel, a cancer specialist. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, um, thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm uh, Mike Manuel, basically I am a gynecologic oncologist which means that uh, I specialize mainly in cancers affecting women and the reproductive tract. There are other cancer specialists, uh, medical oncologists who treat people all kinds of cancers with chemotherapy. There are surgical oncologists who specialize in uh, operating on um, uh, tumors of the uh, intestine and stomach and pancreas and other cancers. So there's a bunch of different types of cancer specialists. And I think that's important to know when you know people get diagnosed with cancer, they can be uh, referred to many different kinds of people for treatment. Dr. Manuel, now just to start off, um, uh, first of all, a lot of our audience is new to, new to this. So what is cancer exactly? So um, cancer basically is um, abnormal cell growth. So any cells in our body can all of, this, all of a sudden become abnormal and undergo an unchecked and unregulated growth. So mm -hmm. basically tumors develop. Mm -hmm. um, and they can develop in organs or in the bloodstream or in the brain or other places. Um, and it's basically an abnormality that develops in the DNA, um, which causes uh, our own normal mechanisms to um, allow for unchecked cell growth and abnormal cell growth. Mm -hmm. And then that cell growth can sometimes take over uh, neighboring tissues. It can spread throughout the body. Mm -hmm. So it essentially means that all cancer is genetic. Um, in some way, because it is an abnormality of uh, the DNA, um, mm -hmm. which leads to this sort of unregulated cell growth. Okay. Um, so can you use tests to uh, check on the cell growth and see if there's cancer there? Or? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that in the past, a long time ago, cancers would just develop and most people, we wouldn't be able to do much for people and people would die of these tumors. Nowadays, we have much better methods of picking up uh, cancers that are developing. So there can be times when people present to their doctor with uh, pain or a mass somewhere and we have all kinds of new imaging technologies, CT scans and MRIs and PET scans and things like that to evaluate where the mass is coming from and uh, to deal with it. There are also plenty of things that are available now to help prevent cancer or to evaluate certain high-risk organs um, through a colonoscopy, let's say, mm -hmm. where they look in the colon periodically and look for tumors. Um, and we know tumors go through a process of going from small abnormal growth and then they get bigger. Mm -hmm. So hopefully if we can find these tumors when they're small, we can take them out and hopefully prevent them from growing bigger and spreading to other parts of the body. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important tests that we have now for screening and to prevent cancer, I think in my, uh, in, in my specialty, the pap smear is by far one of the most important. Mm -hmm. And it's very important <clears throat> that women get uh, pap smears because we can pick up single cells off the cervix with a pap smear mm -hmm. that may be changing to cancer. Mm -hmm. And in that way, hopefully we can treat it before it develops into full blown cancer. And <clears throat> as an example, in this country, cervical cancer is fairly rare because of the pap smear. And mm -hmm. uh, deaths from cervical cancer are also very rare in this country. But if you look at the rest of the world where pap smear screening is not as widespread, mm -hmm. um, hundreds of thousands of people die each year from cervical cancer. And it's a, it's a tragedy. And, uh, we need to get on top of that and hopefully get more people uh, into places where they can be screened. Mm -hmm. The other big screening test, colonoscopy, which may not be a very fun test to go through because mm -hmm. they have to insert a camera all the way through your colon, mm -hmm. um, but the recommendation is that once you hit a certain age, age 50 or so, you should have that done every five to ten years. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that can help pick up tumors early excise mm -hmm. them and prevent them from growing into uh, full-blown cancers. Mm -hmm. And then I think one other test that's important to talk about is the mammogram because mm -hmm. breast cancer is very prevalent in this country and all over the world. And mammograms also are very good. You hit a certain age and you probably should have a yearly mammogram and that can also pick up smaller cancers. So hopefully we'll be able <coughs> to detect cancer at, a, at an earlier stage and help to treat it. Mm -hmm. 
At what ages should uh, women get a pap smear or mammogram? You said for colonoscopies around age 50. Right? It's, yeah. it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, for pap smears, we say that probably age 21 oh, wow. um, or three years after the initiation of uh, sexual activity. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we know that cervical cancer is caused by a virus. This virus is called the HPV or the human papillomavirus. Mm -hmm. It causes genital warts and that virus causes changes in the DNA. Again, that's where the change takes place that leads to the cancer. Mm -hmm. So that virus actually causes the change in the DNA which leads to the cancer. Mm -hmm. So pap smears uh, probably should begin around the age of 21 um, or after sexual activity, about three years after sexual activity is initiated. And that um, then goes on every year pretty much. Um, oh, now wow. there are some variations that are mm -hmm. coming out. We know that maybe some people don't need a pap smear every year, maybe every three years, but those mm -hmm. guidelines are being worked out. The other thing that we know is, <coughs> is also becoming very important is we have a vaccine now called Gardasil, which actually um, addresses that virus mm -hmm. so that we can vaccinate some people against the virus that actually causes some of these cancers. Okay. So uh, that's just an example of one thing that's coming out that um, it's going to help cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. um, mammograms, um, it's also somewhat controversial, but at age 40 or age 50, mm -hmm. uh, mammograms should be initiated yearly. And I think when we talk a little bit more about inherited cancers, Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about how that difference is. If, if you have a family history of breast cancer, mammograms may need to start as early as 25 or 30 every year. So Okay. Um, I have a question regarding having um, the HPV virus and then that creates mutations. So then those mutations pass along to future generations and that's why um, those viruses are that's why um, certain cancers are passed down the family line, right? Mm -hmm. Well, with actually with cervical cancer and HPV, it mm -hmm. really just affects the sole individual. So it, it changes the DNA in that person. It does not change any kind of a germline DNA mm -hmm. that, that can be passed to the next generation kids or anything. So cervical oh, wow. cancer is actually one of those cancers that's very rarely inherited through families. Mm -hmm. um, it's, mm -hmm. that's, um, so when we talk about the damage to the DNA that causes cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, usually there's a theory that it's a two-hit hypothesis. So you have one damage to the DNA caused by, let's say, you inherited an abnormal gene from a parent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but usually it takes something else to actually develop cancer. So mm -hmm. let's say you're a smoker or, you know, um, uh, somebody drinks too much alcohol or some other environmental toxin, that mm -hmm. might be the second hit to that DNA that causes a change, then cancer can develop. So with <clears throat> cervical cancer, you might have HPV infection, which mm -hmm. causes the DNA damage, and then you might, uh, some women who are heavy smokers, that might be the second hit. And we, we know that smoking in the face of this virus uh, can lead to cervical cancer. Um, mm -hmm. So. Usually it takes a couple of things. You may even inherit an abnormal DNA that may cause some certain cancer, mm -hmm. but you may not develop that cancer because there may, we know that there are probably other factors, your immune system, uh, environmental factors uh, that also uh, affect the DNA. So mm -hmm. it it's really is a multiple process. So, wow. um, and I think that it's important nowadays with the Human Genome Project and other big projects looking at the DNA, we're learning a lot more about that and how that's going to yeah. change the future of medicine. I think it's really interesting um, um, the way you talk about the combination of environmental effects and genetics. So um, you're saying um, cervical is more a special case of cancer. How about for other types of cancer? How big of a role does environment play in that? So, um, Lung cancer is probably mm -hmm. the biggest. Um, we know that most lung cancer is caused by smoking. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's, that's one of the most significant environmental sort of, or <coughs> excuse me, or uh, personal habit kind of uh, uh, factors that lead to cancer. Mm -hmm. <coughs>